Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are every day. People want to give this disclaimer that this show is not for everyone. This show is just simply for those who want to be free and remain free. And we give uh, information that is not widely spread uh, throughout uh, history. But we want to bring it forward so you all can uh, understand and know uh, certain situations that took place regarding our people throughout the annals of time. So on with the story from Matt Bronson. It's about Escovara Anastasia. She was the one who uh, was forced to wear the iron mask and she was the first black girl born with blue eyes. So, on with the story from Matt Bronson. He states, I had lived in Rio de Janeiro. I have lived in Rio de Janeiro for a few years. One day while out downtown, I came across a little head of a black girl wearing an iron mask. I had already collected a quite a few strange-looking statues and thought she would fit in just fine with the rest of them. She piqued my curiosity, and I wanted to know more about her. The story I discovered concerning this new small statue was about a child named Anastasia, a black female slave brought from the west coast of Africa to Brazil. Her mother had been forcibly taken by her white owners for his physical pleasure. A child was conceived the first black child to be born with blue eyes. The cruelty and guilt of this plantation owner drove him to have the baby sent far away, concealing from his wife his indiscretions as well as his violence. A man I had met in Rio first told me of the tale of Anastasia and out of the church in which her image is honored. The truth is that little remains to prove her existence. Two accounts do exist, the one above and the following narrative, both of which explain my interest in this amazing woman. My experience in life, and particularly in Brazil, leads me to believe she truly was a real person. Matthew Brunson's The Story of Anastasia, the Slave Girl, based on oral tradition and translated from a Brazilian website worshipped in Brazil as a saint and heroine, Anastasia is considered one of the most important women in black history within the culture of Rio de Janeiro. Her story still has the power to move us to awe and compassion, and for that reason alone, I want to make her real to those that don't know about her. Anastasia's birth is linked to the tale of Delminda. Some say Delminda was from the Bantu tribe, originating in about 2000 BCE in southern Nigeria and Cameroon. A daughter of the royal family of Gal- Galanga, brought to Brazil in 1740 with a cargo of 112 slaves. One version of the story is as follows. Delminda was extremely pretty. She was sold in the harbor by Antonio Rodriguez Vallejo. She had been raped by a white man and was sold pregnant to Jaquina Pompu. Delminda gave birth that same year on the 5th March to the blue-eyed Anastasia. She was the first black girl with blue eyes in Brazil. It is at this point the two stories seem to merge. Whether or not she was separated from her mother or remained with Delminda, all seem to agree on what comes next. As she grew up, Anastasia became the obsession of the owner's son, Jacqueline Antonio. Very beautiful. It is said that all the white women around were jealous of her, so encouraged Jacqueline to make her wear the slave mask as a punishment for repeatedly refusing his advances. He raped her and condemned her to wear the iron mask for the rest of her life, only removing it once a day to eat. She lived for some years before the toxicity of the metal from the mask became poisonous. Some accounts claim she was performing miracles towards the end of her life. 
it became gossip amongst the poor that she could heal because she had found it in her heart to forgive the torture she had suffered and that she even healed her owner's son of some disease. At that moment, she became a saint for many poor people. Some continue today petitioning Rome to have her canonized as Saint Anastasia of Rio. There is a statue and a place of worship in Vast Lobo where pilgrims flock to worship her. She has more than 28 million followers, though I was surprised to find that most of the Brazilians I have met have never heard of her. She is exclusively to the poor of Rio and the descendants of slaves. Some link her image with a number of paintings by Itani Victor Argo, 1755 to 1855, a French watercolorist who traveled in Brazil sometime between 1817 through 1820. His known works portrayed gold mining slaves who were also forced to wear iron masks so as not to hide or swallow gold nuggets while they were digging. She died in Rio after years of agony. Her remains were housed in the church of Rosario in downtown Rio but disappeared after a fire. Anastasia became a religious myth, performing miracles even until today. Many people continue to pray to her when they are sick. Then they are healed. Human rights are for all of us, and slavery is not a condition for humanity. I continuously lived in Brazil from 1855 to 1992. From 1985 to 1992, around 1987, a television news broadcast in Rio said authorities had found a farmer in the middle of nowhere in rural Brazil who operated his farm with all his workers in chains. He repeatedly advertised jobs through the press in Sao Paulo, and when anyone arrived to work, he made a slave of them. 110 years after the uh, abolition of slavery. How can we be so unconscious as to not know about these things? How can we be apathetic to the conditions of others? I would like to put Anastasia into the history books in Brazil and everywhere else. She represents the suffering of people that have been forgotten and are still being ignored today. I hope you see my point of view and can appreciate my art for her sake. Now, we're going to pause right here. You know, because, you know, they don't want you to know certain things, but really it's not up to them to tell the story of our people throughout the planet of what we had suffered at the hands of white supremacy and this is not to uh, point fingers and say uh, the white man did this or the white man did that or to speculate we dealing with actual facts of what took place and the cruelty that took place by people who claim to be human beings on our planet in a time that where there were no love or no hope for black people on this planet. Once again, as I stated, this show is to bring forth a widely spread, that's not widely, widely spread among people that's been hidden under the cover. We want to bring it to the light uh, to understand uh, what was done and what shaped the mindset of uh, people who once were enslaved and how that practice or that mindset uh, they want to carry out in today's time uh, to keep you from being other than yourself or keep you from uh, pulling out the greatness within yourself uh, which will uh, place you at heaven at once and and that's uh, the sentiments of the army Elijah Muhammad place yourself uh, in heaven at once meaning think properly and think like you are the original man and original woman of the planet 
uh, and that the jealousy from you being the first has always existed and people show that uh, resentment towards you whether physically or mentally but it's they don't have the power you have the power to be what God intended you to be uh, this is just a uh, one of the stories that we'll be focused on and bringing forth uh, truth uh, to the light this is Verbal Pig Radio and we out